see so. Oh, it's fabulous! A strike to get you up off your seat! Hello and welcome to Seagull Social Season 4, Episode 38. This has been a mission to get this one started. Jack's on his hotspot in his phone, now he's on the internet. Maz has just lost the plot the whole time. Um, and oh, we've just drew to Burnley oh, away. Yeah, we, it's been quite funny, but also, tr- if you don't laugh, you cry at one of them ones. Um, Jack, Maz, how are you, Maz? I'll start with you. Yeah, good, thanks, mate. I... Um... I went to watch Spurs women versus Leicester women earlier. Um, it was a bit of a Jack Albion-esque trip, really. Um, <laughs> one of those random sort of fixtures. But um, no, thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, enjoyed my day. And, and then I went and did some hate watching when I watched Arsenal lose to Villa at the pub. So that was superb. Got to got to see a lot of Arsenal tears. So yeah, been a Good. great day. Good. Thank you very much, Ben. How, how's, how's your day been? It's been working, mate. The grind never stops. Um, got to watch Liverpool and Arsenal bottle it. That. Got to see the sexy Jabby Alonso lift the Bundesliga. Um, what else happened? I feel like loads of other stuff happened, but yeah. Some of the some of the big, big topics happened today. Um, and luckily it distracted me from the abysmal result that we got yesterday. But Jack, I went with you. I had the privilege of spending a good 10 to 12 hours with you yesterday in a beautiful place of Burnley. Isn't it, Jack? A lovely, lovely town. Yeah. It has a bad reputation, doesn't it? Really, but it's it's not it's not the worst place I've ever been to in my life. Like, oh, I thought I was being sarcastic. No, I do you know what? I thought <laughs> it's, it's it's some nice like Yorkshire, not Yorkshire, Lancashire, Lancashire like town. I think I was saying to you on the train up, I was going like, it feels very championship today. You know, it was like mm. being back in a championship where you all go to like a northern town and there's not many of you and it's a long train journey and. I don't know. I, I quite enjoyed it, but yeah, no, it's, it's not the number one town in the world, is it? But no, um, no. I had a not. good day. I had a good day. You did. It was mental, though. Like we're getting to the game, but the most mental part about it, I think, was seeing all the asbestos on top of the roof, uh, pointed out by your mate Ali, Ollie Mover or our friend. Oh yeah, um, on the roof of the stadium. That's quite funny. And then as soon as Burnley scored, the heavens opened. It was just like a complete. It yeah. was like otherworldly it yeah. was mental that was weird it was so strange I was like well there's no coming back from this the players are going to get absolutely drenched and we're not going to come back but um, it was weird yeah no Burnley is an experience of going there I kind of wish I didn't um, a lot of money and then unfortunately like Jack we don't get 100% off train fares and all that sort of stuff so <laughs> uh, I wish we did for that but um, it's a right but, of passage it's a right of passage, Burnley. Like, you've got to do it there and back in the day on the train. It's like a, a learning experience for you as a Brighton fan, mm. you know, and then getting a pretty bad result. You know, like I said, it's like back, <laughs> at, the, back at the good old days. This is it's, the stuff we live for. It was an education because I, I had no idea Burnley was that far away. If, I, if Jack had tried selling me Burnley and told me how far away it was, I thought it was below Manchester, but it's way beyond no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I really it's, wish I didn't go. You sold yeah. you a dream, Ben. He did, but at least I get to say I went to Turf Turf Moor though. That was it's a very get cool the ground stadium. Get ticked off. Get the ground yeah. ticked off. Mm, it's right. a nice stadium. Um, Maz, what were your general thoughts on the game? Yeah, it, it lacked uh, a quality, I'd say, all round uh, in general. However, we looked decent in parts, and uh, you know, it, we created, I suppose, uh, at times. But yeah, I, I think generally it was a pretty poor game I, I think i feel sorry for any neutral that tuned in uh to watch that because yeah it, it was a it was i don't a think any watch. did to be fair mate um, so but it yeah should, it should be all right there yeah i mean i mean yeah a, a three o'clock kickoff on a saturday i doubt anyone's streaming it aside from me um but for legal reasons <laughs> i didn't stream it of course i would you were in would another country such a thing uh yeah, yeah, it was completely legitimate stream, this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, just, just to summarise, I, th- I think poor mistakes, obviously, both goals, heavily, heavily slapstick. Uh, the first goal, obviously ours, yeah, poor back pass from Belaba, and uh, then Babrugan, yeah, kicks it onto a Burnley player, and it goes in. And then, of course, we all see saw what happened to Murich uh, in the Burnley goal. Um, and we'll, we'll blame that on the weather, Ben. We'll blame that on the on the yeah. downpour. Uh, let's course. not forget it rained. It's Tywood from AFTV. Yeah, let's not forget. Um, it, it applies to both teams, but it's <laughs> only Burnley. So, yeah. <laughs> and Jack, we can't. I think we joked about it being probably guaranteed last on match of the day. I don't. I didn't watch match today, so I couldn't tell you if it was. But I'm assuming it was. Um, did it deserve to even be on match of the day because it was that much of a rubbish game? 
All right, I'd, I'd have been shocked if it wasn't last. Um, I don't, I don't know whether it was last because I didn't w- watch match of the day because I was on a train. But maybe, maybe purely for the Murich error, it would have been like oh, second true. to last potentially. <laughs> just potentially. second to last. I did find it quite funny there where yeah. uh, Maz took a long pause and just went, "It lacked quality," um, which kind of just sums it up, really. I mean, it, it wasn't. Yeah. It, it, I'm it trying to apply it, Jack. Yeah, it, it it lacked quality. Um, it, it was disappointing. I think we've got to a stage in the season where it was a must win. Um, it was disappointing that we didn't win it. I think this is how we're going to have a lot of the rest of the season and a lot of it's going to come out like this. I mean, I know we, we should probably not be too too disappointed, try to temper expectations. But yeah, it, it was a real shame. I think there was so much where we tried to do stuff that just wouldn't quite come off. We really lacked a cutting edge. Uh, Pedro was probably our most dangerous player, but even then he wasn't really firing on any cylinders. And and then same with Adingra, he really didn't live up to much expectation. I don't think it helped that, you know, we had two fullbacks and, you know, God bless them, they try. But, they're, you know, Igor and Veltman are not exactly the most dynamic fullbacks in the world, are they? Um, really good players and I think they, they perform quite well, really, given the circumstances. But... You know, you can't exactly do overlapping runs with Igor and, and, and Veltman. <laughs> so I think that didn't that didn't exactly help the situation. Um yeah, and I, I just think we we we've just lacked cutting edge and we lacked it again, really. Um mm. I think there's a bit of a do curse. Know, do you know what got... it reminds me of? Oh. Go ahead. oh no, go, sorry, Jack. Uh, go, uh no, I was just gonna say what it reminded me of is like, you know, the the Potter era when we just couldn't score. Mm. Like we'd yeah. we sort of dominate possession and and we'd create in spells, I, I wouldn't say we created like the whole game yesterday, uh, but we created in spells and, and we looked, you know, dangerous at times. Um, but yeah, we just had no cutting edge. And I felt like that, you know, at times under Potter, we had those periods, didn't we? Uh, mm. Was it 15 games of that win, that period we had with, with Potter? Um, or something crazy like that? Mm. So yeah, it, it just reminded me a little bit of that um, yesterday. But yeah, sorry, Jack, uh, carry on. No, yeah, I, I think, no, I agree with you. It was quite Potter-esque, wasn't it? Um like I say, we lack the dynamicism that we've been used to. I think I, I I do think we're just running out of steam a little bit. Um, I did think this would happen at some point this season. Um, definitely with with the with the European fixtures. So I'm disappointed because it sort of kills our chance of Europe. But I think I think I said to Ben in the pub when we were watching the Newcastle Tottenham game, and when they went four 0 up. I did sort of say to Ben, I just kind of went, that's us for Europe then. It felt a little bit like that game, if that game had ended with a loss, then we might have still been in with a chance. But it felt like as soon as that game was 4-0, it sort of, for me personally, I sort of felt like Europe's done, really. Mm. I think, I definitely agree. I think before the game, I said it was going to be, if we don't beat Burnley, then Europe's completely done. But it is definitely done now. And now I'm... I mean, it's going to be quite negative. I've got quite a few negative things to say, which is unfortunate. Um, but now it's like, we really need to not finish like 12th, for example, because that would be, it'd be respectable finishing 10th or and above. But I just think if we keep dropping down, because Fulham got a decent result today against West Ham, they have been getting decent results recently. Um, there's a lot of teams around us, like Chelsea, w- Wolves as well, that could finish above us, because with our run in it, it's pretty, pretty poor. Um, and, the way we've been playing, I can't see us getting many points from our final games. So, it, yeah, it's going to be a real, real tough end to the season. I really hope we don't slip further down to the table. But at the moment, I can't see anything other than that happening. Also as well, I just wanted to ask a question because I've, I've seen it banded about a little bit um, with regards to injuries. Because, look, let's be frank, we had nine players out injured yesterday. Uh, of course, it's, and it's been a huge part of our season, right? We, we've had a lot of injuries this season. But how much like how far can you go by saying oh we can play like how many more games can you blame it on injury because you look at Newcastle Jack you've mentioned it mm. they played a back five which is arguably like championship level back five yesterday and they're still beating Spurs 4-0 so I suppose my question to you boys is yeah do you feel like our, our injuries are an excuse to keep playing you know worse than we did last season or, or this season I suppose um, or is it a valid excuse um, I I How think it's a mix. It yeah, yeah, I I think it's a mixture of both. Um, of, of two things, not both. Sorry. So I think obviously the injuries play a massive part, which I think is which is. I I don't think it's a bad excuse. I think it is a good excuse. We've had 
key players in and out of the team. You know, Pedro, what, 19 goals this season, albeit a lot from penalties, but there's still goals that he's contributing to. We've had him in and out of the team, arguably one of our players of the season. Matoma, who was one of our players of the season last season, he's never fully recovered from his first injury, I don't think. I think he he, he got an injury early on in the season. He never quite got up and going again. Um, and he, he did seem to run out of steam. I think we were we were overplaying players a little bit um, through necessity. I think Adingra's massively suffered from that. I, I still think that he's a very good player in there. But I remember the Burnley game at the at the home game further on in the season, and I think he played. You know, in that period, he played against. He played the full ninety against Athens. Then again, he played against Chelsea. Played against Brentford. Played against Burnley. Played against Marseille and played against Arsenal. And you just look at all these games he's playing where ordinarily we would have been able to rotate, especially with the two games in a week thing. So I think we, we suffered a little bit on that that side. I think he's run out of steam. I just think players are running out of steam and maybe the rotating was a good idea in hindsight um, from De Zerbi at the beginning of the season. But I think, and then I think the other big thing, the massive thing is that we, we lost McAllister and Caicedo. And we, we can blame that because they're a huge part of the way we play. Uh, Caicedo and, and McAllister basically ran our midfield with grace. So to not have them two is a massive, massive loss. And I think I understand why the club didn't fully replace uh, probably Caicedo because I think the market for DMs was quite poor. But I I think... That's just one of the realities of the situation when you sell a big player like that. You, you, you're you going to have to adjust without them. Um, and I think we maybe haven't as ju- adjusted as well as we should. Mm. Also, I don't know, I think, yeah, we can blame it on injuries a lot, but even still with the team that we fielded against Burnley, I think we definitely should have won that still. Yeah, see, I, te- I thought it was really strong. Yeah. Yeah, with the players we had. I mean, yeah, it wasn't our strongest, obviously, we know that, but it's definitely strong enough to beat mm. Burnley. No, no offence, but completely all offence and have fun in the championships next season Burnley but that is it just we definitely should be and then you can't <laughs> you can't you can't be I don't know can you blame De Zerbi from the, the way we played potentially as well yesterday um, I just think so many players I don't know if this comes down to De Zerbi, but so many players like we said just weren't taking shots I think the mo- the, the bit at the end uh, with Lana summed it up completely like passing it around the box Lallana's got a great chance to shoot and he doesn't. He tries threading it through the night, the ninety six yeah. minute, or whatever it was. I was thinking, are you absolutely? Are you joking? Everyone was, everyone in the stand was livid with him. Um, especially, I don't know. He, I don't know how long he played, but it felt like it was only ten minutes. I saw him make one bursting runner. That's the quickest I've ever seen him try to run anyway. Um, and then he was like limping off the pitch afterwards. And I think maybe he does need to retire soon. He's done a sucker. He's, he's very he's done a sucker. He's a very good player. Um, we know that for sure, but. If you're that knackered after like a 15 minute, 10 minute spell on the pitch, I don't know, it's tough. Or maybe he's unfit. Maybe yeah. a lot of the players that are unfit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think we do have a lot of injuries, but there are still I, teams that you can beat with the players that we had. I think Ben just brought yeah. up a very good point there, which was rather than injuries, maybe it's fitness, which is a problem. I don't know whether it's the player's actual injury record, which is which is causing the problems, or whether it's the fact that players are just unfit as you can tell with some other players. Mm. So, <laughs> you got the t- have you got the train going <laughs> tunnel in the back? <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. Um, it's no, no, that, that's a good point to be fair with the fitness. I, uh, I just, oh, it was Alexa. Yeah, it's Ale- it was that <laughs> woman who works for Amazon. But I've just realised that what I've probably, what I've probably done to activate that, which is quite funny, is the first name of our former player called McAllister has probably activated uh... that device. So there you go. That's quite funny. Makes oh, sense. I got you. That is that funny. That makes sense. I quickly <laughs> though, Baz. I just want to. I just want to add. Go on to the injuries thing. Yeah. Um, my mate Brett sent mm. me a screenshot from an article. I think it was a Telegraph saying that Brentford are having a. Or they're doing a investigation in themselves to see why they've got so many injuries. It was like an in, a, a quiet, yeah, emergency sure inquiry that. or something like yeah. that about why they've got so many injuries. Why there's a crisis there. Like, can we please do the same? Because. I don't remember hearing too much about Burnley's injury crisis, but I've, maybe it's because I support Brighton, but I feel like ours is far worse than a lot of teams, especially Brentford. Like, It'd be great to know why all these players, like, even in CISO, um, well, he came off against Arsenal in the 55th minute or something like that, didn't he? And then 
Yeah, yeah I, I think now, he mentioned about having fluid in his knee, I think. Well, yeah, I think oh, with, yeah. with NCSO, I, I think it was just, yeah, he had like fluid in his knee, so it was like a uh, just a little precautionary one, I think. It, it wasn't necessarily like an actual uh, injury. Um, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a weird one um, with, with all that. And I, I think just to fi- finally go back to your point, uh, Ben, on, on uh, Lalana. Um, thank you for the memories, mate. But uh, it's time to go. No, look, he, he's been he's been fantastic for us, and I think unfortunately his legs are gone. And, and he's a brilliant player to have around the squad. He, he's great. Yeah, uh, in terms of like, leadership coach roles and, and all you know, manager. Yeah, yeah. As a coach, unbelievable. I just I just don't think he's he's got it anymore. Unfortunately, he, he just doesn't have the legs. Um, and you know, sometimes as well, usually his decision making is one of his best assets. And you know, at times in the beginning of the season. He actually proved to be a really great asset for us, especially, yeah, uh, the earlier um, of the season. But I just feel like now, yeah, his legs are, go- are proper gone now. Um, and it is time just to sort of just take a back step and just be a coach or, you know, do what mm. you need to do behind the scenes. Because, I want him, yeah, this you know, is... players like Buonanotte and, you know, all, the, all these up and coming players need to just get more minutes. And I suppose they are, but, you know, maybe give it to someone else that could, could yeah. use the minutes, I suppose. Yeah, this is... I don't want to be rude, but I absolutely want Lenan to stay at the club for as long as possible. Because I think, like you said, his knowledge and his potential as a manager or coach is incredible. Like, I'd love for him to stay at the club or be our future manager one day. But yeah, maybe as a player, his time is up. It's an interesting point you quickly made about the, the young players. I found it bizarre, but maybe it just gave me an answer that I wanted an answer to. Um, that Barco didn't warm up when Esther Pinyan got injured. Only Igor did, thinking, like, I thought Barco might be a left-back option, but clearly not. So maybe De Zerbi does only see him as a winger. I, don't, I know maybe he's not got the physicality for a left-back, but I it's think, a strange one. I think uh, Barco as a left-back is a bit of a... Uh, I wouldn't say, like, a full, full thing, but I think when you look at where he's played recently for... When, recent games for Boca Juniors before he came over, he wasn't really playing left back. He was playing more as a central midfielder or a wide player. So I do think there is a lot of truth in that, in that he started at a left back, but in reality, he's not really a left back. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because, yeah, you would obviously think that maybe he'd come on, but maybe he just doesn't trust him. I don't know. I do think some of the questions, yeah. the decisions from the manager, are, are, are I'm questioning a little bit. Not not that much, but they are some strange ones. Bring in Adam McDonald from no, Eastbourne I, Town, I, mate. I, I, Adam McDonald, Jude McDonald. <laughs> sorry, I completely butchered that. Yeah, I was going to say, Adam's uh, <laughs> our co-host sometimes. He'll um, do a better job. But just quickly, Jack, on, yeah. I think I think deserve it. We definitely have to have a chat. I think we're sometimes scared as fans, I suppose, for someone who's done so much for us uh, in Deserby. Look, we can be grateful. We can always. Uh, I think he's a great manager still. I'm not, I'm not saying he's a bad manager, but I, I still I think there are question marks over him, and, and I don't think it's unfair for us to say that as Brighton fans. I think there's he's definitely you know because the fact. So the reason why I'm saying all this is because he's obviously he's been linked with some big jobs, Liverpool, namely being one of them. Um, I know he's been linked back with some jobs in Italy as well. Now. For me personally, for those top top jobs, I personally don't think he's ready for that. As as Jack's just touched on, I think sometimes he's naive in terms of his substitutions. Uh, I think sometimes he's naive in his uh, the way he sets up. Roma being a prime example, playing three at the back and then at four nil down, changing it to a back four. And you know, there's there's certain moments in the season where I thought, it, was that the right thing to do? Is that you know, uh, even yeah, some of the personnel. Um, changes and swaps he's done there's just there are a few question marks throughout the season and I suppose that's a good thing because you know there's that means there's room for growth and he's going to get better and you know he's only been with us for what, a season and well nearly two seasons now so he's still got a lot to learn in my opinion and um, I think he'll be a massive grave error on his part if he was to leave uh, us to try and go for these bigger jobs but look um, I think he's what he's done is incredible up at this point and fingers crossed with some investment which Tony Bloom's come out in public he said that he's going to invest big as well um, hopefully we can invest in the right uh, areas and hopefully De Zerbe can actually kick us on from what we did last season uh, we can sort of write this season off a little bit and just go try and kick on from season before mm, it was I've, I've definitely heard a few people kind of getting fed up with De Zerbe and maybe a lot more open to him leaving rather than him st- being desperate for him to stay. Jack, where are you on that sort of Um oh, I just situation. think people want, want Deserby sacked and just reactionary nonsense that is. Yeah, that's insane. That's yeah. like 
you know, I, I think it's reactionary. I think it's, yes, we've had a few bad games, but we've obviously done very well to still be in touch with Europe is a really good achievement. I think looking at the idea that if, if De Zerbi leaves at the end of the season, like he could possibly well do, he will have overseen our t- two of our highest ever finishes. So I think there's no doubt that he's a very, very good manager. And that Potter season where he finished ninth, even then, we were 13th at half time. So there wasn't, there wasn't much between it really, between ninth. This season is looking like it could be a similar end to the season. So I think if we do finish something like 13th, I don't think it's the end of the world because of how in touch we would still be with the rest of the pack. Um, the positions don't mean that much, really, other than a couple of million quid extra. Um, for me, though, I think in terms of De Zerbi leaving, look, I think he's still got a lot to learn. I agree with a lot of what Maz said. If he wants to move on to these top clubs, he needs to learn some of this stuff. Um, I think he's trying to fit a lot of square pegs and round holes at the moment to try stop the rot and keep keep formations going. You know, ideally, he wouldn't have the options of you know. Uh, Igor and Veltman as his fullback because that's not how he likes to but that's what he's been forced to do um, I don't know it's a hard one to decide really um, definitely shouldn't go I think he needs to stay in the summer and hopefully get a bit of investment I think as well like the idea yeah. the idea of getting Europe two seasons in a row which I think I, I said to you Ben on Saturday getting Europe two seasons in a row is very difficult unless you have serious investment yeah, um, like Wolves. Like you know, you look at look at teams who have also done it. Um, I think Wolves did it twice, but then they they did have a lot of they investment were backed. At the time. Yes, what I'm saying. They yeah, were backed. They yeah. were they were backed like to Hill. You know, Aston Villa. They haven't spent silly money this season, but they still spent like seventy million more than what they sold, which is which is a lot more than what we spent. Yeah. Well, um, they spent fifty five million on DRB, for example. Yeah, yeah, think. exactly. <laughs> so they've spent money. Um, I think. Yeah, at the, end, at the end of the day, I think we've done a really good job to get to Europe, probably ahead of plan as well, with where we were as a club. I don't think we were, if you would have planned out, you know, we want to get top 10, we want to do this, we probably wouldn't be straight into Europa League straight away. That wouldn't be part of the plan. So to do that ahead of schedule, it's not too bad to take a little step backwards. I think we're always going to take a step backwards every now and then now when you're at this top level, because, you, you know, the only way is up <laughs> uh, until this season. And... Now to go beyond that, you're looking at really pushing and breaking up the top six, yes, finish six point. consistently. Um, so for me, I I can't see that being something that will worry the club or Deserby. But I just think, yeah, I think we should be quite relaxed about finishing not in Europe this season because I don't think we were going to do it. This is exactly how I thought the season would go. I thought we'd do really well, but we'd run out of steam just as the season goes on. Uh, you look at some other teams like Stoke. And we are staying up now, as I pointed out, lots of times on the train to try cheer everyone up. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> as a result of Burnley losing, we are now officially Premier League for a record seventh season, which is something to be celebrated. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm very calm at the moment looking into the future. <laughs> I wish I was as well. I, I, yeah, I just I do feel a bit disappointed if we do finish low. I know I said it earlier, but I know they don't mean much money wise, but they're kind of bragging rights. We don't want to finish below Chelsea after being above them for the majority of the season, now do we? That's the only thing. Um, I do want to mention one but bright it, yeah. and bright, one bright and positive thing about Burnley. Jack, can you guess what it would be? Um, no. Oh, and then I go great. <laughs> Wait, you're back. Can oh, you guess back, what I'm it'll back. be? No, I still can't guess what it'll be. Maz, can you guess what it'll be? Um, that you made it back home safe, maybe? That is true. No, we did do that. But no, Jakob Moda. <laughs> Jakob, Jakob Moda. He oh, was nice. very, very good yesterday. And it was really, really nice to mm. see. And the fans were singing his name quite a lot. Probably the person we sung about the most um, came over and said, clapped to us. I said, oh, God, that was another thing. A lot of the players didn't come over and like clap or anything like that. I feel like Dunkey did it, Igor did it, Jao Pedro done it. They then three gave their shirts Van away. Van Hecker did. Belaba, Van Hecker, Moda came. Um, I hate to so name Lalana. No, I hate to name Lalana as well, but he just walked <laughs> off. Maybe he clapped from a distance, but I didn't see it. He just walked straight down the tunnel. A lot of the players went down the tunnel. Uh, Belaba might have come over to give a little clap. Obviously, he was absolutely devastated. His head was in his shirt at the end of that full time. 
because obviously he felt like he was partly to blame for that goal. Do you know, but, um, I, do you know what? I thought... uh, aside aside from the mistake from the goal, which uh, you know we all mm. know is a, quite clearly a mistake, mm. I actually thought he was pretty good. No, yesterday. he was. I, I, I thought one of our best players, and, and, and he's been and he's been good. Yeah, and he's been good for a good period now. So, you know, uh, of course he's going to be disappointed with that with that mistake, and yeah, it was it was poor, but. I, I don't think it's the the end of the world. Like, this is all learning curve. And I think I think Jordan is from now until the end of the season. Do you know what I just want to see? It's just us to give it our all. I know it sounds very cliched and very like, you know, football manager kind of vibes. But I just want to see us give it our all. Our players, you know, uh, try and develop the players as much as they can. Give them as many minutes as we can, like the Belabors, uh, maybe the Bonanotes, uh, and Ciso when he's sort of uh, up and running again. Just get them back into the groove of it. And then hopefully we can hit the ground running next season. And, you know, th- these players are all ready to raring to go uh, and then hopefully we can kick on and get Europe so yeah look, I, I think we've all accepted now that it's pretty much Europe is is a very very slim you know chance of it happening yeah. um, and like the players yeah like Moda Belaba and all these players just for the end of the season just keep you know get, get them operating at a, a higher level and then yeah we can kick on next season but yeah. sorry yeah just going back to your Moda point um, he's been fantastic and, and a really big surprise as well because we've we've slagged him off a few times haven't we well uh, we was they slagged him off but we just enough. said that yeah we just said that he isn't good enough I think, no, we've, I think we've always yeah, given the caveat that. like he's never had enough consistency but I think yeah with us not really needing to fight for anything and, now and in also, the league, let's just play him every game because he's clearly getting better with the yeah. with more get the more games he has under his belt, and he could turn out to be a much better player that we thought. The player that we probably thought that we were going to get when we originally signed him, when Bayern Munich wanted him. I say it every time. There's a reason why Bayern Munich must have wanted him and were scouting him. There must be a well, player in there. The way they've gone this season, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Maybe Moda would have won in the the league uh, instead of Harry Kane. Um, but yeah, uh, Jack, what were your thoughts on Moda? And do you think he could be a good player for us if he gets more games under his belt? Yeah, I think he's a player who's, who's taken a lot of stick, um, especially when he's injured, which was a weird one. He takes a lot of stick from the usual suspects who just seem to <laughs> seem to hate us more than they seem to like us playing, which is a bit weird. It seems to get enjoyment out of us losing. Um, yeah, I think he's done really well since he's come back in. Um, I think he's playing for a contract at the end of the day or playing for like possibly more involvement next season, which is definitely why I think he's trying to up his performance a bit and show us how good he is. Uh, I do agree with what Maz said, that I thought Belieber was one of our better players um, before he made that massive game, almost game-costing mistake. But if you completely avoid that, um, he played really well. So, But yeah, no, I, th- I think Moda... That's the most Moda, bright line I've ever heard in my life. He was our best player, yeah. apart from that absolute yeah. howler he produced. Yeah. Um, I think it would be interesting to see, like, what we do in the summer. I, I do have a feeling that we could be in for some big changes, um, personnel-wise, as well as possibly managerial. Um, or maybe deserve will oversee a managerial change. I don't know. We haven't really had a manager who's had an opportunity to sort of revamp the whole team in his image. Um, it's always been a case of let's work with what we've got, keep the mainstay of the team. So maybe we'll get a big overhaul. I'm not entirely sure, but it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I would love to see that. I, would... I think for me, the most the, the most important position next season, in my opinion, is definitely the midfield, of course. goes mm-hmm. without saying. However, right back, I'm sorry, Lamptey, I love you to pieces, mate. <laughs> But he just can't keep fit, can he? I'm sorry to say it, but he can't keep fit. And I, I love him as a player and as a person. He seems like a lovely bloke. But you can't rely on a guy who gets injured that much. I, I, if you want a consistent right back, and, and we've you, you, you touched it earlier, Jack, in terms of Veltman, he doesn't really suit the way De Zerbe wants to play. Again, Veltman, solid player, like great squad player, great player. Actually, you know, most of the times he plays, he, he, he drops you a 7 out of 10 like as a minimum. But if De Zerbe does want that sort of overlapping fullback, unfortunately, Joel Veltman is not that guy. And you can't rely on Tarek Lamptey, unfortunately, to play you, what, for, however many games, 40 games, however many games there are in a season, especially with Europe as well. If you want to play in Europe, you, know, you want to do FA Cup run and, you know, all these extra competitions. Unfortunately, Tarek Lamptey just isn't going to keep fit. And, and it's been proven time and time again, as much as we want to believe in his fitness injuries being a, a thing of the past, it's not. Let's just be real. I'm not and, ready to uh, let go. It's though. a shame. It's I'm a shame. not ready to let go. No, you got. I you, love him ben, so you much. You got to do it, mate. You got to do it. It's a real shame, so, though. With, I know we all do. It's a real shame. We all love though, him, but it's a, it's a real shame because I was, I was, you know, I think I was thinking at the Brentford game. I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, Lamptey's really doing well with his fitness at the moment. We've had quite a few consistent games out of him, 
I think it was after the Arsenal game, and I was going, oh, yeah, he's doing really well at the moment. And then, you know, surprise, lo and behold, he's uh, injured again. So that was quite disappointing. But I do think we need to get a more permanent, solid right back. I think maybe another left back for genuine competition with Purvis. Um, I've already seen this link with a few left backs, so it does look like we're looking. Um, Because Purvis's fall off has been disappointing this season. Um, he's obviously scored a worldie on his return and he's scored another worldie against Stoke but since then he's just not really been doing it for mm. me anyway but we know um, why though it's because yeah, Matoma and he hasn't got a decent left, yeah. well I'd say decent left wing he hasn't got Matoma pretty much to help him who he has a great connection with but um, I want to go, quickly go back to Lamptey if he does go uh, where does he go because what club in the Prem will be sorry to say this is, sounds rude but dumb enough to sign him knowing his injury track record so hmm. why yeah who would actually sign a Tarek Lamptey th- that injury pro like that I think I th- if we can I think maybe a lower end because mm. it's less risk in it similar to how we did it when we first signed him I suppose yeah, yeah. I think we could we could have a situation I think uh, for me I, I wouldn't want to sell him because I don't think we'd get much money for him mm. and having him as an option there is not a bad thing so to keep him around, sort of, as an option, definitely not a bad thing. Um, maybe loan him out to get fitness, but it just doesn't seem like his fitness issues are ever disappearing. Um, I can see him maybe leaving on a free transfer eventually, because I can't see a club taking a punt on him. Um, it sounds it sounds very disrespectful the way we're talking about him now, and I don't mean that because he can be he can be a fantastic no. player on his day, um, but I just think his English record, English injury record, is making him a bit it's a bit worrying now. Um, I think Palace have a similar thing with what's it, Nathan Ferguson, who they keep on uh, signing who? up to one year deals. Um, is it Nathan Ferguson? It's something Ferguson, and uh, yeah, he just he just keep you just can't keep fit, and there's got to be a point where you sort of jettison them. Um, who the hell is Nathan Ferguson, Jack? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Nathan Ferguson. I've never uh, has he uh, pl- has he ever played for them? Uh, like two games. Yeah, he used to be at West Brom. Yeah, he is oh, he is yeah. real. He is yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, they got this guy for a couple of million and he just hasn't hasn't done it for them. Um another one with a severe injury record. Another another unlocked it from the hive in my mind. Um yeah. so Probably. there you um, go. But yeah, yeah I, I think I like the yeah. idea of um keeping him just because he is a good option and then if he's injured fine, but just still like mass we get a new right back in, but keep Lamptey just for the vibes and that sort of thing. Just give him money. I like him. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I just, yeah, we do, we do need a permanent right back solution. That's, that's all I'm trying Mm. to say. But I love Lamptey and uh, he's been a great servant to us. And I, I, you know, every time he comes back, I hope he gets over his injury record. And like I said, against Brentford, I was like, you know what, he's doing a really good bit of fitness. If he's back the next game, maybe we have to worry less because then that would be one game that only one game he's missed out of a load. So, I mean, I, I remember his performance down at Marseille. His, his performance at Marseille was fantastic. He was one of the best players on the pitch. Yeah. So, you know, he can perform to high levels when he wants to, but it's, it's fitness, which is just gutting. Mm. I don't, yeah, I don't think a loan will do anything anything good because it will just, he'll probably just get injured on loan without sounding mm. disrespectful. But yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd like to keep him <laughs> as long as possible and just play him when we need, play him when we can and when we can't play someone else, but someone to a decent level anyway. Um, I don't really know what else to talk about Burnley because it was that much of a horrendous game. I feel like we've managed to mm-hmm. talk about quite a fair bit dis- despite how horrendous the match was. Um, I don't really, I mean... Yeah. To, it's just two howlers, wasn't it, really? It was. I mean, their goal, I've never seen... Yeah, I was really. quite, that's the fortunate. I, I was... I said to Jack, actually, I've never seen a goalkeeper take a throw-in until I saw Bart Verbruggen take a throw-in. I thought that was quite I've seen cool. him take throw-ins before. What, goalkeepers? Oh, wait, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, it's always like in a desperate moment. A really yeah. famous one. Happens all the time in non-league, yeah, mate. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> a, really, a really famous, I believe, a really famous goalkeeper throw-in. Here we go. Now we'll get to goalkeeper oh. throw-ins. I think I, what, I know this. one of the most famous goalkeeper throw-ins I remember was Joe Hart took a throw-in just before Aguero scored the winner against QPR in the famous oh. title rest game. I'm pretty sure he started the move for the final goal by taking a throw in. What, Balotelli Aguero? Yeah, Balotelli Aguero. I'm pretty sure that move was started by Joe Hart throwing. So oh. there you go. Wow, well, look at that. The, there right, you then, go. Uh, Full of facts today. And then yeah. I obviously got and, to and saw actually, that, sorry, that absolute howler from the goalkeeper, which was hilarious and 
great fun to celebrate. Yeah, I but mean, I, that, I think that summed up the game in in general. Like yeah. that yeah. mistake from Muric <laughs> just encapsulated what Brighton versus Burnley was yesterday. Um, but just just quickly, one one thing before I f- uh, forget. Um, there were some some murmurs about how uh, people weren't happy, especially on socials, Twitter mainly, uh, of how they weren't happy with De Zerbi's, uh substitutions. Now, not so maybe so much the personnel, but the timings of it, saying it was too late um, for the time they came on. So, like, I think Altu Fatty got, what, five, ten minutes, if that. Um, so, yeah, what, what do we think? Do we think... Again, it's going back. I suppose it's going back to the earlier chat we had about De Zerbi's sort of decision-making. But, um, yeah, were, were you annoyed at the time? When those subs, mm. like him making it too late? Um, I don't know. The hard one to... I, I have some sympathy with him, uh, De Zerbi, on that. Because I, do, I don't think we were playing badly. Like, we, obviously, we weren't creating much. But it wasn't like one of those things where it was like, we need like a dagger to change this game straight away. It was sort of like, we're just sort of just passing it around and keeping possession. It wasn't like bringing someone on could massively change that. I do think he was a little late with the subs. It would have been nicer to maybe see some players come on a little bit earlier. Um, it was really nice to see Marco Mahoney get yeah. a debut, um, although he didn't do much with it, admittedly. But, you know, it's very difficult to get thrown into your first Premier League game and either player I've been shouting the praises of after watching him for the under-21s. So it's really good to see him get a chance there. Um, but yeah, no, I was a little bit surprised, a little bit disappointed, but I still don't think, I mean, Ansu Fati, as good as he was, has been in the past or whatever, him coming on with his form at the moment doesn't exactly inspire, like, he's he's not been great. Um, so it's not a player who, who when yeah. he came on, I was like, I, I, oh yeah, we desperately need him to change the game, because he hasn't been able to do that so far, and that's probably the most disappointing confident- thing about him. Is it a confidence thing with him, or an ability thing? Because I saw Ryan post a video from the club, and it well, was... But like yeah. he was finishing, looked the incredible. Training video. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's yeah. just. A I feel like they're thing. selling us a dream there. Yeah. <laughs> no, the John is with, with him. I, I think. I, I I think he's definitely got the ability. Like I don't think the ability is the question. I think for me, a, uh, my opinion is that yeah, I, I think it's a factor of uh, keeping fit. Again, he, he's a very injury prone player. Mm. You know, again, he, he's picking up put form for us. Then got injured. Uh, then was out for a, quite a long spell. And so injuries have killed his career in, in general. Mm. And then, um, yeah, it's, I suppose it's that confidence of playing regularly, week in, week out, with a manager who trusts him, which, which I think Deserby definitely does. He, I know he's, he praises him a lot when when he can. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think it's with him. He's got bundles of ability. It's just keeping fit and, and having a run of consistent games where he can show his ability and, and I suppose playing him in the right Ooh. position as well because I think we, we, we he tinkered with a few bits as well. This is a f- this is obviously going to sound quite bitchy, but obviously that's another one of De Zerbi's signings paying off really well after De Hood being one of his signings and being horrendous. And then ob- obviously we spoke about it earlier about if we are going to be back this summer with De Zerbi, is Bloom going to let him pick any of their players? Because so his decisions haven't really been that successful, have they, Jack? No, I think we had a little chat about this on the train home that I think De Hood and Anthony Fatty, if they haven't come from the algorithm, you can tell why. Um, you know, it's they've not been great. Um, but I don't know. I'd, li- I'd like to see some very clever signings. I think we've got to trust the club with our signings, um, how they come good. I do think we've got some good players potentially coming back from loan as well. Um, Dad, baby. Yeah, if Vindav, if Vindav does indeed come back, I'm not entirely sure what the crack is with that. Um so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think we're in for, a, like I said, I think we're in for a big summer. So it'll be interesting to see what comes of that, really. I think it's, it's a season where we can sort of mm. see it out, you know, go to the games, have a beer, relax. I'm looking forward to Newcastle away. <laughs> see yourself out as well. Do you know what? It's going to be so nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you cut out for us there, Jack. You're probably still gone. Uh... Yeah, he's oh. still gone. <laughs> and I, think on, I think it's a great time to end it, though, Ben, I think. Yeah, for that, sure. Right? It's funny because whilst you're actually, he's just going to pop up again. Um, yeah. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Jack. I'm back. I'm back. We didn't. Uh, we didn't hear what you yeah, said. I think but, people probably still did. But, I imagine it's still recorded. But we're going to end it there because yeah. I think the podcast ended up being just like the Burnley game, to be honest. But we tried yeah. our best. We, did, we tried I, our best. I, a few yeah. more shout outs. So you said there's a couple of things. We don't cut out. To, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, a few more that we haven't talked about. Firstly, uh, congratulations to Leverkusen for winning the uh, 
Yes. Bundesliga. That's happened oh, in the last few hours. Uh, I know a few Leverkusen fans, so congratulations to them. <laughs> really nice lads. Um, and then the other one is shout out to uh, Southport FC for staying up. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of my mates came up with us on the train and uh, he was very happy that Southport have got yet another wonderful season in the National League North. So I'm sure oh, I'm looking forward to it. Also, that. as well, shout out to Worthing as well. They secured um, their promotion playoff? place. Uh, playoffs, playoff place playoffs. Season. That's the one. So, yeah, yeah. promotion. Yeah, look, yeah. everybody else is doing great who Congrats. we sort of half support. Mm. Uh, all the other teams that we sort of have a vague interest in are doing really well. So, um, yeah, it'll yeah. be... Brian, take a hint. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm exactly. trying to figure out what the what the caption is, uh, what the caption is, what the title is. Is it, we are staying up or is it, the season's over, pack up pack up your bags? I think I think we are staying up. Yeah, let's, let's look positively towards <laughs> this. I think we okay. are staying up. It, there's no difference for me. This is my last positive point. There's no difference at the end of the day between finishing, <laughs> let's say European is seventh and above. <laughs> let's say European, uh, stop laughing. Right, uh, come on, I've cut, I've cut. I think. I'm back. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sure this is going to sound great. Um, no, for me. Disaster. I was trying to, <laughs> when I try to be positive, the internet cuts out, <laughs> doesn't it? Um <laughs> But there's no point, there's no difference between finishing 8th or 17th. You get exactly the same from that. So let's look at it positively and enjoy the rest of the season for what it's worth. I know I will, let's, if I don't cut out. Let's, <laughs> let's, 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 sign off. let's sign off with two things. Yeah, Life is a roller coaster. And Jack, yeah. what you got to do? Just got to ride it, man. Just got to ride it. Just got yeah. to ride it. And second, and second and final, football's always the winner. Yeah. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen. Unless you're Man City and you have loads of money and 115 charges.